let's talk about Tasmanian Liberal Senator Claire Chambler. She's a champion for women's rights. She's campaigned against transgender athletes or biological men being able to compete against girls and women. She's drawn attention, too, to rulings like the one allowing transgender competitors now even in gymnastics. This week, she spoke in the Senate about these issues and how they can be traced back to changes made by former Prime Minister Julia Gillard. It was triggered by an extraordinary response from Gillard to the simple question about what is a woman. Look, I am um, very happy to answer your question, but I... I do worry this has turned into a kind of got you parlour game. Uh, there are a number of people who genuinely believe that they are trapped in the wrong body and they want to be recognised as the gender that their mind, ha mind and soul have always told them that they are. Uh, gotcha question, can you believe? Now, Senator Chandler shared her reaction to our first female Prime Minister's astonishing non-answer. Well, thanks for having me on the show, Chris. And uh, you're right, our former Prime Minister, our first female Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, did find it quite difficult to answer that uh, particular question. And uh, frankly, as much as it is disappointing, it probably shouldn't be surprising because it was under Prime Minister Gillard and the former Labor Green government that removed the word woman from the Sex Discrimination Act back in 2013. So as a direct result of that legislative change, uh, we no longer have uh, women's single sex spaces and services such as sport protected under anti-discrimination legislation. So I was just as disappointed as many of the women in that room at that function to hear uh, Ms Gillard refer to that question as a bit of a gotcha parlour game, um, particularly in a situation when it is because of her government and because of her government's actions that we find ourselves in this completely mad world now where men are allowed to self-identify into women's spaces under law. This is extraordinary. Uh, watching the full answer from Julia Gillard, I think it went over three minutes, just tying herself up in knots. And, and it's all driven by, I suppose, denying what a woman is in order, or at least avoiding saying what a woman is, in order not to offend transgender people. I mean, just because you're upfront about the biology of a woman doesn't mean you've got anything nasty to say or insinuate about transgender people. Absolutely, and it's completely buying into the tactics of the uh, radical gender activists that try and frame this debate up that way that you've just described. But at the end of the day, there is nothing offensive about recognising that a woman is an adult human female and that as a direct result of that, it is appropriate to have women's only spaces that only females have access to, that it's appropriate to have women's only sport that only females have access to. This is absolute common sense and the fact that Ms Gillard couldn't engage with that question in a, a genuine way and answer that question the way that it should be answered, I think is very disappointing from our first female Prime Minister. Yeah, look, and you've been a leading advocate on this. It's such an issue of women's rights, women's rights and girls' rights to be able to have those safe spaces, uh, places and organisations put aside for them. It makes so much sense. Of course, you know the overwhelming majority of the population is on board with you, yet these activists seem to have... They carry such sway with governments and bureaucracies and the like. And we're seeing this play out in Victoria now with the attempts by a lesbian group to have a, a function for lesbians who were born female in... In other words, they only want women lesbians. They don't want transgender lesbians. They're biological males who identify as lesbians turning up, but they're having all sorts of uh, trouble, all sorts of protests about even being allowed to have such an event. And this is the exact sort of madness that we now find ourselves in, that um, women who want to, you know, have events like this need to be... Um, feel the need to be so prescriptive about what they're actually trying to achieve here because, um, you know, just having a, a women event for les lesbians these days would apparently also attract um, men who identify as women. So we just need to get back to basics here. Men are men, women are women, and there's nothing wrong with women being able to 
um, have their own events and have their own services and spaces because, uh, you know, under law that's what should be protected. But like I said, sadly we're in a situation where that's no longer the case. Well, it's a perversion, isn't it? When you think about where feminism started and where this sort of radical feminist or radical transgender has, has led us, you've got a situation where women are wanting to have an event for women, but the, the radical activists insist that even if it's event, an event for women, then men identifying as women have to be allowed. Exactly, Chris. And I always find it really frustrating, particularly in the sports space, that so much ground has um, seemingly been um, seeded on this issue. When you think that um, women, you know, 50 years ago were fighting for the right to compete uh, in, in sports at the Olympics, to compete in sports at world championships. Uh, we have invested so much time and money in resource, and resources in um, ensuring that we, we celebrate our women's sports stars in this country, uh, to then say that that's not important and that blokes should be able to participate in women's sport as well completely flies in the face of that, that very real and very genuine and important fight that generations of women have had. Spot on. Thanks for joining us, Senator Claire Chandler. You're a voice of sanity in this space. Thanks very much, Chris.